I'm going to go over a lab that we do in AP Environmental Science called LC50, which is also known as lethal concentration 50% dead. And we're going to use our salinization results that we did last semester to do this lab. The reason for using the salinization results, uh, I'll explain in a second. But first, let's talk about what LC or LD50 means. The term that is used in your book is called LD50, which is the median lethal dose. And you can read up here that it's defined as the amount of a substance required to kill 50% of a test population. It's usually rats and it's expressed as milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Humans, we don't test on humans, but we can take the data from rats and we can extrapolate that data and multiply it out for humans. It's not perfect, but it's um, the best that we can do without testing on humans, which is completely unethical. So for humans, here's some interesting LD50 amount. So basically, if you, sick, if you drink six liters of water at one time, it will kill 50% of humans of an average of 75 kilograms of weight, which is about 140 pounds. Um, caffeine is going to take you 118 copies to, uh, for about 50% of that population to die from the caffeine. And then alcohol is 13 shots, which is about equivalent to 13 beers or 13 glasses of wine. The liver goes through overload um, from that toxin and about 50% of people will die. So these are just some common substances. Now let's talk about water real quick. Our bodies can't process huge amounts of water. We have water toxicity. Now most people are not going to drink six liters of water at one time. Um, that is a little bit less than two gallons of water and you might drink two gallons of water in a day but you do it over slow amounts of time and so that's fine. All right, so why do we do LC50 for our lab instead of LD50? So let me talk about that in, uh, really quickly because you're going to need the um, answer to this as part of your lab questions. So if you have the lab in front of you, I'm looking at a question um, about what is the difference between LD50 and LC50. And so LC50 is lethal concentration, and that's basically where you put um, animals in a concentration of a solution. And LD50 is when you give them a dose like with an injection or um, you feed them a dose of a certain substance. So we can't do anything with dose in high school because it's technically um, illegal in the state of California to do experiments on vertebrates, so anything with a backbone. But in some um, science classes, we can do LC50. So basically, you would take maybe a few containers of water, and you would um, put some little invertebrates like brine shrimp or water fleas in some pond water, for example. And then you would increase the dose, so maybe you have 0% of something like um, cupric sulfide, and then you would go up to 1%, and then maybe 2% of the substance and then you measure at what point do half die and that's your LC50 uh, percent. This is actually a very difficult lab to do in high school because it's actually very hard to keep the little bugs alive before you then kill them off and students don't really like to kill off things anyway. And so it's much easier to use the results of our salinization lab that we did last semester. All right, so we're going to use the results from this lab. This is the soil salinization lab. And I'll go ahead and give you some data that um, is some typical data for soil salinization. So if you, let me remind you of what we did in this lab. We um, germinated seeds 
in different concentrations of salt. And uh, we then, about four days later, counted how many of the seeds germinated. And so this particular picture shows 1% salt solution, and it looks like four out of five of the seeds here germinated. Sometimes we use five seeds, sometimes we use 10 seeds. Here's another picture, and if you remember, you also measured the length of the sprout. Um, and so you had a couple of pieces of data that you measured. So this was the data table, and you filled in the number that germinated and the percentage that germinated and the length of the sprout. And so what we're going to use is we're going to use this data, and I'm going to give you some sample data. But we're going to use a lot of the data. We're going to use multiple groups data because the more data you get, the more accurate your results are. So go ahead and pull out this paper, LC50, lethal concentration 50% dead. And let's go ahead and you have a graph up here that um, is a little bit of a a graph to kind of help explain the concept. And let's go ahead and read. It says toxicologists use the data known as LD50, lethal dose, 50% dead, or LC50, lethal concentration, 50% dead, as a measurement of how toxic a substance is. We will examine salinization lab results from several groups to find the LD50 of salt, NaCl, on beans, or peas. We did peas, actually. So we're going to fill in the number of beans that died. So it's actually opposite data. On your salinization lab, we wrote down the number that germinated. And so now we're going to subtract that number from our total number in each dish and or each bag. And we're going to get how many died. So if 9 germinated out of 10, it meant that 1 out of 10 died. So it's opposite data. So I'm gonna give you here some sample data and go ahead and fill in your um, chart here on your own paper as I give you some sample data from five different groups. So at 0% NaCl, nothing died. So they all germinated, uh, the seeds did not die. And so uh, we'll, I'm going to give you data from groups that use 10 seeds in each dish. So 0 out of 10 died basically in all five groups. Sometimes you get a, a dead seed and it doesn't germinate just because it's dead, not because of any toxicity. And then the next one, um, 0 died here at 0.5 NaCl. Now I'm not going to write the over 10. We'll just you just need to know that in each of these dishes there were 10 seeds. And then go ahead and fill in the data here as I fill in some sample data from five groups. So you can see the higher the NACL, the higher the death rate. And by the time we get to 2.5% NaCl, basically all the seeds are dead from the salt. So now we're going to add up our total for all of the groups together. And remember, when you get group data, you get more accurate results. So our total here of dead seeds is 0 out of 50 total. So 5 groups and 10 seeds in each, you get 0. This one is 2 out of 50. This one is 16 out of 50. And then 41 out of 50. And 48 out of 50. And then 50 for both of these concentrations. Let's go ahead and get a percentage. So 0 divided by 50 is 0% dead here. And 2 out of 50 
um, is going to be 4%, so you should know how to find percentages already. This is 32%, and we have 82% here, and 96%, and 100, and 100% dead. So you can see here that there, there's no number that equals 50%. So how do we find our 50% dead? So what you do, and in, this is a skill you need to know on the AP test. There have been previous FRQs that have asked students to add and then graph the results and find the LD50 or LC50. So, and, and then there are also released AP exams that expect you to be able to read an L D or LC50 graph as well. So for this particular um, graph, we're going to graph the percentage of dead seeds here and on this side. And in our case here, um, oh, we're good. And then on the bottom here, we're going to graph the percentage, and I don't have a whole lot of room here. This is the percentage of NaCl. And I'm going to set up my axes. I'm going to put 0 here. I'm going to put 0.5 here. And 1% NaCl, 1.5. Again, go ahead and copy this down. You need to know this. This is a skill. Knowing how to graph this data is a skill that you need to know for the AP test. And over here on the y-axis, I'm going to go ahead and go by 10%. So 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100%. And so the title of my graph, because you always have to title the graph and label the axes, so the title would be the effect, well, we'll say it's the um, LC50 of NACL on uh, seats. Okay, and so now I'm going to graph my data at 0%. I'm going to go ahead and look up right here. It's 0, so my first data point is going to be here at 0, and then at 0.5 5% NaCl, that number is right here, it's 4%, so I'm going to kind of put it right about here, there's a dot. And then at 1%, we have 32, so I'm going to go ahead and put a dot just right above the 30 here. At 1.5, we have 82%, and at 2%, we have 96% dead. And then we have 100% here and here. And um, so the key here, and it will tell you if you have an FRQ on here, is that you want a smooth curve. And yes, they will mark you down if they ask for a smooth curve and you do straight segments you don't get a point. So if it says smooth curve, it means you connect the dots with a smooth curve like this. All right, so go ahead and connect your dots. So now my graph is here with this curve that I can use to calculate 50%. So over here is the 50% marking right here, and I'm going to draw a line over from 50% to where it hits the line, my curve, and then I'm going to drop it down, and I'm going to read the number here. So this number where it hit the line and I dropped it down is about one point one five 
something around there, 1.15% NACL. So when you're asked to identify a number, what if pupils are slightly different? That's okay, because if you're asked to do this on an AP test, there will be an acceptable range. So the graders of that FRQ might have an acceptable range from like 1.1 to 1.2. And somewhere in that range, if you wrote a number, you would get the answer right. But, but listen carefully, you do not write a range. You have to give a definite answer. Don't write a range. Give a definite answer. And so we have here the, um, the number. So at 1.15% NACL, about half of our seeds are going to die. Now there's a couple of things that we need to also label. Um, it says to label the linear dose response curve, and that's basically what this is. So this is called the dose response curve. It's just the curve of the graph line. Okay, and then we're going to identify a threshold level. That's the level that basically the body can tolerate it or there's no death. Um, and we don't really have that. We start getting death rates at 0.5. I'm going to give you a, a worksheet later where there is a threshold level, and so we'll, we'll talk about it at that time. But at this particular graph, there is no threshold level. So we'll go over that at another point of time. All right, and then you also need to answer the question number two. What is the difference between LD50 and LC50? And I went over that at the beginning of the instruction. Uh, number three, what does a high LC50 mean? So if the number is high, it takes a lot of it to kill you, it means it has low toxicity because it takes a lot to kill you. And the opposite, a low LC50 means that m tiny amounts will kill you. And so that means it's highly toxic if low amounts will kill you. For number five, you need to review chapter nine where it talks about salinization and we sticky noted some ways a farmer can prevent salinization. So refer back to that chapter for that. And for also number seven, what can a farmer do if their soil is already salty? It's a good review of salinization for you. Okay, number eight, refer to the handout, how toxic is toxic. Okay, so the handout is, um, I actually have a different title, so I need to correct my worksheet here. The, the top of the worksheet that you need for numbers 8 and 9 and 10 and 11 and 12 is called the lower the LD50, the more toxic the substance. So let's take a look at that. So this is the reference sheet that you need, and it's going to ask you the top highest uh, toxicity, which means that you're going to look for the lowest amount that kills you. So for number eight, higher toxicity means a lower LD50. And so go ahead and go through this worksheet and look for the lowest numbers and write down the three substances with the lowest number. So this is LD50. This is a dose. And you can see at the top here, it says oral rat per kilogram. So um, oral means they fed it to the rats, and it's this milligram per kilogram of the, of the rat's weight. So if we look at down here cadmium, cadmium is found in rechargeable batteries, and it 225 milligrams of cadmium per kilogram of rat weight will kill 50% of the rats. Let's do some calculations with that. So I'm going to go back to uh, your worksheets. So uh, you should answer here numbers 8 and 9 from that reference sheet. And now let's go uh, to number 10, 
figure out your weight in kilograms. And so go, go ahead and do a conversion for your weight. I'll just do a sample here of, um, let's say somebody weighs, weighs 120 pounds. And so my conversion would be 1 pound equals 0.453527 kilograms. You can just round it to point, um, sorry, up here it's 0.45 kilograms. And it's per one pound of weight. And so now our pounds cancel. And if you multiply 120 times 45, you're going to get your weight in kilograms. Do it for your own weight, not unless you happen to weigh 120 pounds. So my answer here is 54 kilograms. Now we need to look up on that reference sheet uh, caffeine. So on your reference sheet, caffeine says 192 milligrams per kilogram of weight. So per every kilogram, it's 192 milligrams. Now uh, you should be able to do this without a calculator. Um, and when you do the calculation of um, your kilograms cancel and 54 times 192 um, is going to equal 10,368 milligrams of caffeine. Now, don't worry, a cup of coffee is about 100 milligrams. So it would take you a lot of cups of coffee to kill off half of people with your own weight. And um, even a monster energy drink is about 86 milligrams of caffeine. Now, you might die from something else in those substances like the water, um, but the caffeine is going to take you more than that. Now, we're going to practice converting to grams because you need to be able to convert in the metric system easily. So, 10,368 milligrams, if you remember your metric system, um, one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. And so we'll set up a conversion that way. So we're basically dividing 10,368 by a thousand, and our answer is going to come as 10.37 grams. Go ahead and do the same for nicotine. Use the reference sheet for nicotine in answers 12 and 13. And make sure you answered the other questions uh, before you turn in this lab. And that's how you do an LC50 curve and calculations.